Well, the key violations are unfortunately the right to life. Uh, there are multiple instances of sexual violence, so there's an invasion of personal security. We have instances of torture, and then of course there are the more widespread issues of denial of education, health care, housing and so on. Government forces are certainly involved in civilian attacks. Obviously there have been civilian attacks by some of the opposition groups as well. Um, both of those uh, types of attacks should stop and both will constitute war crimes for the individual perpetrators. So it's the fact that it's a part of a systematic attack against the civilian population. So in some of the instances in the report you will read that we determined that there was no military objective to be attacked by the government forces. They attacked the civilian population with a view we feel to driving out that civilian population. So that constitutes a crime against humanity to the extent that it's part of a widespread attack on the civilian population. And then within that you have the killing and the torture and the rape, unfortunately, where that gives you the actual crime against humanity. So there are these two things, the, the, the human rights violation and in addition the fact that it's systematic or widespread against the civilian population. Civilians are sort of ritually humiliated if they're caught by parties to the conflict. That involves sexual violence, also executions in front of family members. But many civilians, as you know, have had to flee their houses and leave um, across country to try and find refuge either within South Sudan or over in the border. The state remains responsible for its violations of international law, including the African Charter, and we are calling on the state to provide reparations, to continue investigations into these events, and punish the individual perpetrators.